we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Living God, may this be this time, may we realize it is the most precious time. No matter how we've lived thus far, may this be a time where we go in Christ. Whatever wrong, may we be forgiven. And may we be able to forgive all the wrongs that others have done to us. And may we become new in Christ. I don't have a past. The past has nothing to do with me. I don't have enemies. I don't have anyone that I hate. I don't have anyone that I have bitterness in my heart. I can't do it with my strength. Help us to wash with the blood of Christ and to become a new vessel. If I'm new, then you've said that I'm a blessed man. May we have a start as a blessed man. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Let's greet the person next to us. We will do more well. We will do more well. So there's at least four people around me. So what I say is my blessing. So let's say to the person next to us, we will do more well. We will do more well. So why are we saying this? So those people who've gone to their hometown, in Christ, there are people who have received curses. So they're filled, you know, with that in their heart. And, and I'm sure spouses have fought saying, oh, I told you we shouldn't have gone. But if you witness Christ, you still receive blessings. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14. Let's read it. So those people, you know, this word, because it's sweeter than honey, you can't but say Amen. You know, even if you end up, if you're sleeping and you end up um, fighting in your sleep, it will still be an Amen. That's how good this is. So, you know, I can't be the only one that thinks this is so good. There's nothing sweeter than honey in the world, but God's word is sweeter than honey. That's Psalms 119 verse 3. So this word is God. So if you hold on to one verse, that's how much you hold of God. So because you don't know how good this is, you go to your hometown and even if you've received so many curses or whether you've eaten rice cake, whatever you've eaten, there are a lot of people who have been treated, mis, you know, mistreated. The closer you are to God, the more, the more you're treated badly. And the closer you are to demons, the more you're treated well. So in the world, it seems like it's good, but it ends up being thorns. But if you get rid of this, by the thorns by the blood of Christ, So the Lord, he makes what isn't to be. That's Romans chapter 4, verse 17. So if he makes what isn't to be, do you think he gives us bad things? No, he gives us good things. So how good is this? So if you're given, if you're given a huge amount of gold, even someone who's mute will probably end up saying thank you, but you're giving, you're being given something better than this. So, if you're given a cow, when you're given a cow, you're actually given a rope. So when you take that rope, you know what follows behind it? The, the whole cow, all this meat and and it's God's word even food if it's delicious you like it but 
when you come back from your hometown, on the way there, you were happy, but on the way back, you're all under a cloud. You know, all you sit down is talk about how, who's got a good car and, and, and you talk about, you know, what, what car your child's driving. talking about what's more expensive and so you're all so busy just being envious and jealous so people all live by envious jealous jealousies if you're not inside of Christ that's all you live with but in Christ we receive the best blessings and let's receive better blessings let's do more well so after you come back from your hometown you calculate and you think, oh, you know, I've been disadvantaged. I didn't want to go, but I've just been disadvantaged. If the Lord sent you, then the light shone. God, He moves all of nature. No matter how good your farming is, no one, no one can end up controlling it. You know, we talk about the 21st century. When did farming start? Thousands of years ago. And they've learnt and, and yet still things don't happen the way they want. You know, not even one blade of grass grows the way you want. So these people who do farming, you know, things don't work out the way they want. And so they always talk about how they're at a loss why? Because it's God who does it. But, you know, our lives are more precious than a blade of grass, yet we think that we can control it. So if we, if we can realize who I am through nature, so the Lord, he again makes us do well. Let's read together. So those people who receive curses, they're blessed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Amen. So if you receive curses, that's blessings. But not those people who were fighting with their spouse and then receive curses, that's that's not a blessing it's when you're in Christ when you're cursed for the name of Christ if you're cursed because of forced debt repentance people who say oh why do you believe why do you believe so crazily you know why is it that every dawn every evening you go you know which pastor preaches daily And, you know, when he does preach, it's like two hours. You know, none of his sermons are 30 minutes. They're all, you know, they're all so long. How precious is this? A man doesn't live by food, but lives by God's word. That's Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. So if we live by God's word, if we don't eat it morning and evening, then it's a lie to say that you have strength. So we live by God's word. And in all of the world, at Pusan First Church, they give God's, give God's word the most. So my wife says, just give a little in case you get indigestion. But with God's word, you don't get indigestion. You have to be cursed for the name of Christ to be blessed. What we have to realize here is if you're living according to the name of Christ, then you will receive curses. That's the sign. So the, the, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is with you. These people who say, oh, you know, we have the Holy Spirit. So these, 
So the way to receive the Holy Spirit, the only way, is four-step repentance. That's what God's teaching us. But these people who say they will receive the Holy Spirit and they end up receiving demons. So it's when you are cursed for the name of Christ that you're blessed. That's when the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is with you. So without four-step repentance, there is no way to receive the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, let's find that. So people who say, oh, you just have to hear God's word. Well, as you're doing four-step repentance, that's when you hear, if you hear the, God's word, that's when... You receive the Holy Spirit. That's Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. People say, oh, you know, you have to believe. But you have to do four-step repentance continuously. And then when you hear the word, that's when you're given faith. And when you continue, that's when you're, you're given the Holy Spirit. So without four-step repentance, there is no faith. You're, you're not given the Holy Spirit. You're not cursed. And even if you're cursed, you can't endure you separate and you make denominations. So, because you can't win over Satan, you separate from your spouse. Inside of Christ, you win over everything because you're made new. So those people who say this destiny is filthy, people who are unfortunate, inside of Christ, that all ends because it's all a new start. So with a new start, let's do well. Let's do more well. We will surely do well. So why is it that Pastor Park keeps correcting? Because it's for you to go rightly to not be crooked. You know, if you don't, you have to continuously receive guidance. Otherwise, you'll fall into the ditch. That's what this word is. So let's read together. In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. So in him, after you believe, so you can only receive the gift of faith in Christ. So in him you believe, if you receive the gift of faith. So someone who has received the gift of faith, then you're given this promise of the Holy Spirit. You're sealed with him, like a stamp. So Galatians chapter 3, verse 14. You have to receive the gift of faith, which is by four-step repentance. After that, then that's when you receive this promise that you receive the Holy Spirit. So it's when you continue to do four-step repentance that you receive the Holy Spirit. So that's a blessed man who is cursed for the name of Christ. So you have to receive curses, not almost receive curses. Why? Because that means you don't belong to them. That's why you you receive curses. But those curses aren't to you. Those curses are to God who is with you. So those who curse you, a little while later, they are, cur they are ruined. Let's find John chapter 15, verse 18, 19. So enemies... excuse me, are not for me to repay, but we entrust to God. And instead we plant blessings and we give profit to others. It is so regretful. There's nothing as precious, as good as this. But if you don't understand this, you think that you do. But if you're left for a few days, you're, you, you, fall up, you, fall, you fall away somewhere else. So, those curses don't belong to me. God is like a bulletproof glass. He, he blocks all those bullets. That's what it's saying here. So, someone who receives those curses, they are blessed. But because you're not cursed for, for forced at repentance, that's why you don't receive blessings. By forced at repentance, if you receive curses, that's when you're blessed. That's when the Holy Spirit is with you. If the Holy Spirit is with you, then you receive incredible blessings. So let's do well. Let's do more well. Let's do well. Let's do more well. And let's pass it down to our descendants. Let's read it together. If the world hates you, you know that it, ha it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. 
but because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world. Because of this, the world hates you. Amen. So it's because you you belong to someone else that that you're cursed. But demons, they can't receive curses because they don't go the way of blessings. They go the way of being ruined, of curses. So if you go to church and you don't receive curses, but it's not because your actions are bad that you receive curses. Romans chapter 2 verse 24. It's because of you that God is cursed. Not that type of person. It's when you're in Christ. So as you're walking, you know, these people, these people who are, who are, who are candidates, do you know how much they try and help others? They run around helping people. That's not helping. That's putting on a show. That's not helping. Someone who God's love comes inside of them and you help others. After you help someone, you always receive curses. But even though they receive curses, they still help. So when your mother helps you, you know, does she help you where your feelings feel good? Even at dawn, she wakes you up, even though you don't want to, and you feel upset about that. But, and, and mothers, even though they help, you think that they help you in everything um, well, but there are many times that parents kill you. Why? Because they don't know. Because if they're crooked, that's all they can do. So you have to be right to help rightly. You are someone who's praiseworthy in the world. If there's a tree that's crooked 90 degrees, you are so you can use that as a, as a post. You can't. They'll say, no, you can't. So they say your habits at three last till your you know your sixty, but so in the world they say if you you're not raised well when you're young, then you know then you're rotten. They say you can tell someone by the by the bud. So when you plant a bean. So they say you can tell by the sprout. In other words, if you don't, if if you someone's not right when they're young, you know they can't do well. But with this, with this mystery, you can fix your destiny. It's only by Christ. So if someone curses you, they're not cursing you. They're cursing God. It's because you belong to God that you're cursed. You know your relatives, your parents. Even your spouse, if you're in Christ, then you start to fight with your spouse because the demons will always curse you. So when they curse you, that's when you're a blessed man. So if you say something back, that's that's bad. You, you should say thank you because you're a blessed man. So we will do well. So it's not me that's being cursed. It's God who receives that. So it's God who takes care of that enemy. That's not for me to worry about. If anything, I have to pray for them to do well. Um, bless them. Romans chapter 12, verse 14. Because when I bless them, that blessing comes to me and my children. So there's no one to hate. We don't have enemies. If we have enemies, then we don't have faith. But if you have an enemy, someone that you hate, and you say that you believe, that's a lie. Faith is to have no one that you hate. It's to not have enemies. So it happens according to your faith. Matthew chapter 8 verse 13. Why is it that you don't do well? Because you don't have faith. You have people that you hate. You have enemies. You have people that you can't forgive. You have people that you want to kill. So it's all a lie. Well, I'm not like that. Well, what denomination do you belong to? Already, if you're divided, if you have, if you have your own faction... So let's say there are people who are fighting.
So already, if you're you if you're already in a domination, you're already being ruined. Because if you hate someone, that's murder. One John chapter three verse fifteen. You can't go to heaven. So even if you hate someone, that's murder, and you can't go to heaven. But if you are in a domination, how can you go to he he heaven? So no one teaches you this. Why? Because then denominations would have to disappear. Which denomination are we? We're inside of the Lord, the Word. So those people, you know, whoever comes here, whatever denomination, doesn't matter. Because in Christ you become one. We don't say, oh, because you're this denomination, you can't do well. Is that what Jesus did? He, Anyone, anyone could do well. And that's why he said, Anyone, anyone come, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. But if you go to a denomination, they'll say, Oh, you can't do well because you're not of this denomination. That's going to hell. And yet people still go there. You know, why is it that we don't say correct words? You know, if you leave people alone, how can that be loving your neighbor? If you don't love your neighbor, is that keeping the commandment? If you don't love your neighbor, you're not keeping the commandment. John chapter 14, verse 15. If you don't love your neighbor, then you don't keep the commandment. So 100% you'll go to hell. So if you truly love your neighbor, if, so if you rebuke someone and there's no thanksgiving, they don't come here, then they'll get, they'll get diseased. So the the devil, Satan, drags drags you away. Don't go the way toward hell to be ruined. But you have to come hear the word. That's how you live. If you say, oh, I don't need to eat it, that's a Pharisee. If if the word, the, the meal is being shared here, if you don't need it, then you're a Pharisee because the Pharisees, they scorn God's word. Luke chapter 16 verse 14. They are enemies with God who receive wrath. Matthew chapter 23. We can't become like that. But this truth, this word, no one says that if you if you go to denomination, you go to hell. That's why they're demons. They won't say correct words. Why is it that denominations will go to hell? If you make a denomination, if you make a faction, that means you don't have faith. You're, you're a fake. Jude chapter 1 verse 15 to 16. How can you go to heaven? Jesus, he didn't make denominations. He was, he was for anyone. Even John the Baptist, when the Pharisees came to receive prayers, to receive baptism, even though he called them the Pharisees that deserve wrath, he still baptized them. He didn't divide. Or separate so we live so wrongly yet we don't know just a little while later when I said if you make factions you'll go to hell you didn't say amen you just sat there that's because you're fake if you preach the gospel with knowledge if this word comes to you by four step repentance and instead of being a living faith and you just know this as knowledge if your actions don't change, you can't say Amen. So how fake are you? So this is why your desires aren't being fulfilled. When you die, you'll go to hell. So your actions, you only know yourself like a, like a beast. You only know yourself and your, your children. That's all you know. And that's why as you go along the street, there's no one to help because you only know yourself and your children. So you're the same as dogs or wolves. How can that be a saint? A saint. So some people say they themselves aren't, they don't do well and yet they help others according to their feelings. That is a beast. When God puts something in front of you to see if you'll help. If there's someone that you hate, then, then I'm fake. There's no one that, that you hate, that you should hate. You know, if you see a leper, you know, if you worry, oh, you know, if I help that beggar or, you know, then I won't get anything back. Oh, but I'll help that person because I'll get something out. That's a fake. If you help wanting something back, 
You know what your right hand does, your left hand shouldn't know. That's when you receive blessings. Matthew chapter 6 verse 3. If you remember, then you won't receive blessings. So after you do service to God, those people who say, oh, I did this much, those people can't receive blessings. It's not me that to do, it was completely by grace. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10. So if you say, I did it, then you'll be ruined. So in the past, if you were believing in Jesus, and yet without forced repentance, everything you did was your strength, and so you're ruined. And so the pastors, they acknowledge you with some, with some, uh, you know, um, award. And that's a fake church where they cause you to be ruined. They give you this, this um, award uh, to thank you. These people, they go the way of ruin and yet they don't know. You know, if you love to receive praise on this earth, you have to be cursed, but you don't want to go that way. So the Holy Spirit is, is with those who are cursed. Let's go the right way. So, so the Father wants to give us all things. If we obey the word, then we receive blessings. So, those who are blessed are cursed, but we're cursed by Christ for the name of four-step repentance. So, Christ is wisdom. Let's find 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. So, if you go to a faith church, they don't know. It is so sad. Let's live properly. Let's live properly. Let's live according to the word. So, if there's a denomination... You need to know that that's a group that will be ruined. You know, they're, they're separated. They didn't separate in Christ. So they're a gathering that will be ruined. That person, when they preach the gospel, they preach it out of envies and jealousies. Philippians chapter 1 verse 15. So we don't have time. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Amen. So Christ is wisdom. Do you believe this? So this wisdom is greatest. Wisdom is greatest. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Do you know why wisdom is greatest? Because without wisdom, you cannot realize your sin. Where is that? Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 29. So you have to have wisdom so that you can prepare for your last days to go to heaven. If you have wisdom, then you realize your sin. So if you realize what you need to wash, how can you just leave it and not wash? But these fake churches that don't repent, because they don't receive wisdom, they cannot realize their sin, so they have nothing to repent. So it's sin that blocks us. This sin comes out, of, out, comes out every day. So because of this sin, our connection to God is cut off. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 to 3, that's why we receive curses. We don't do well. So this wisdom is greatest. So it's God who's decided that wisdom is grace. So this wisdom makes us realize our sin and makes us repent. And so God uses us in the greatest way. Why are we here? To be used in the greatest way. So wisdom is the greatest. Let's find, let's read Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Wisdom is greatest. Christ is the greatest. So a gospel without Christ is a fake gospel that will go to hell. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Don't forget that. Let's read together. The beginning of wisdom is acquire wisdom and with all your acquiring get understanding. Amen. So after acquiring wisdom that's when you can get understanding so wisdom is the greatest when wisdom comes then you realize your sins this wisdom you know if you're given 
you know, some gold. You'll say, oh, I'll never forget this my whole life. And even if you're told not to come, you come to dawn service and you'll be, what can I do? And why is it you go to work early? Those people are the ones that are in higher positions because they're given something good. That's why they come out early in the morning. Those in the low place, at the beginning, you know, you're happy with that, so you you come to work early. But when you see that everyone else is coming, you know, slowly, you too come slowly. But once you're given a high position, then you come out early. Why? Because you're given this high position, you're given more pay. But if you were given some gold, the whole night, you and your wife, you and your spouse will be looking at looking at the goal the whole night. And you know, you would be you would do so much service because because of that wisdom. Uh sorry, because of that gold. But better than gold is wisdom. Let's find Proverbs chapter eight, verse eleven. So no matter how much gold you receive, no matter if you receive all your desires, what is better than that? Wisdom. And yet, you don't know that that's how good this is. You know, if you're given gold, then you bow your head and... But if you're given wisdom where your sins, you're made to realize your sins, you scorn this. So are you scorning God's word or obeying? If you're scorning, will you be ruined or do well? 100% you'll be ruined. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 13, these fake denominations, even though they preached this, they scorn this, and that's why they're going the way of ruin. And yet they expect to do well. And these fakes, they go there. It is so pitiful. Let's do well. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 11. For wisdom is better than jewels, and all desirable things cannot compare with her. Amen. So, all the desires that you wish for, you if you receive them, you'd be like, oh, this is so good, but it doesn't compare with wisdom. And yet, you don't know that wisdom is better. You don't know that repentance is better. Repentance is better. So, it says, for wisdom... So wisdom is first at repentance, Christ. Christ is wisdom. For wisdom is better than jewels. So the best, the best um, jewel in the world are pearls or above that are diamonds. But back then, even though they had diamonds, they didn't know. It's only these days that um, we know about diamonds. But back then, pearls were the greatest. So, more, uh, more expensive than pearls is wisdom. And yet you scorn this wisdom, false day repentance. Even if you were given a jewel, you would be like, oh, wow. But then, if you're given rebuke so that you realize your sin, so better than that is wisdom. And yet, how much thanksgiving do you have? You'll be like, oh, Pastor Park, why did you say that in front of everyone? And, you know, now my face is so embarrassed. No, this is the best. What are your desires? All your desires being filled, wisdom is better than that. So you're thankful. Instead of being thankful that you're doing well in the world, you should be thankful that you're realizing your sins. That's where miracles will happen. Let's do well. So wisdom is the greatest. So let's read verse 10. So rather than gold or silver, what should you receive? You should receive instruction, which is discipline. Let's read. Take my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choicest gold. Amen. So this knowledge where I study, that ruins me. Knowledge that God gives, 
you acquire. So let's find Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. So wisdom is the greatest. You have to res receive wisdom to also receive knowledge. So if you do four step repentance in Pro Proverbs chapter 8 verse 12, it says wisdom resides in the address of understanding so that wisdom doesn't depart. That's when you receive knowledge and prudence. So without wisdom, you cannot receive knowledge. If you receive knowledge without forced repentance, that will ruin you. But the knowledge that you receive from forced repentance, it saves you and others. This is the greatest. So this knowledge is faith. So forced repentance, after forced repentance, after you realize sin, then that is, then you receive knowledge. That is faith. So faith is to now know. So before the Red Sea was blocking, no one knew how to block it. But Moses, by faith, he knew that he should put out his staff. So knowing is faith. And so when he obeyed, that's when miracles happen. Those who are tied up to the fake knowledge, who don't repent and, and who have the worldly learning, they are stubborn and if something is wrong according to what they've learned. You know, they'll say, these are my thoughts. And they talk, they talk hell, hell talk. And that's why they have a fight with their spouse or wherever they meet, they, they argue. So wisdom is the greatest. So after four step repentance, then knowledge comes. That's Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. Let's read it together. The fear of Jehovah is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Amen. So, the foolish, those who are going to hell, don't want to do this. So, fearing God is the beginning of knowledge. So, fearing God According to the word, fearing is forced at repentance. But instead of doing that, they learn things of these of these denominations, and that's why they're ruined. Let's find Isaiah chapter twenty nine, verse thirteen. So they learn fearing wrongly, fakely. They say that you know, fearing means to respect and to love. No, forced at repentance is fearing. Let's read Isaiah chapter twenty nine. Verse 13. Then, Jeho then the Lord said, Because these people draw near with their words and honor me with their lip service, but they remove their hearts far from me, and their reverence for me consists of tradition learned by rote. Amen. So they don't fix their hearts. They don't repent of the sins of the heart. And... The fearing is what they learn in their denomination. That's what kills people. Why do we say? Why is the Protestant Church, you know, why, why did it happen? Why did they say the Catholic Church was wrong? It's not because they were making a denomination. It's because the Catholics, they follow these, these, these traditions that they make. So the things that that they've made in the world, you have to believe that and follow that. And that's why the Protestant church came out of there. And then and then people have argued and, and made denominations and become enemies. So now let's go the right, right way. If we want to go to heaven, we have to go the right way. If we want to do well, we have to go the right way. But these demons, they still sit in those denominations expecting to go to heaven even though they're told that that train will go to hell that train they fought they're going a different way and yet people still sit there how regretful is god that he's given us these realizations of the bible so that we can preach this but demons they won't listen to this they scorn the word we have to live we have to receive salvation our children have to do well we have to save the country. 
So who does God use? So we've come here to be used, to do more well. So wisdom is four step repentance. So when you realize your sin and you act completely to be righteous and your children do well and to go to heaven. So if you're not righteous, you can't receive salvation. So you've come here to do well. But why is it that you don't do well? Because you don't put wisdom as the greatest. Which country says that wisdom is the greatest? Wisdom is forced to repentance. That's why they can't preach about this. That's why they're going to hell. Without Christ, that sermon will ruin your soul. It's a fake sermon. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Today we have to awaken from that and live. So let's live properly. So tonight... What kind of person do we have to become? Let's find 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20 to 21. So even though you hear this, if you witness that Christ and your curse, then that's a blessed man. But you don't preach this. You know, it's it's so regretful. You don't even know about yourself dying but it's not just you dying you kill all your children yet you don't know this it is so so regretful let's read together now in a large house there are not only gold and silver vessels but also vessels of wood and of earthenware and some to honor and some to dishonor therefore if anyone cleanses himself from these things he will be a vessel for honor sanctified, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. Amen. So if you want to be used preciously, it's not that you were born, you know, as gold or you were born out of, you know, made out of marble. No. If you're clean, that's what you, is used most honorably. So... Just like 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24, even if you are the worst in the world, you're, you've sold your body like Rahab the prostitute, even someone like that, as long as you're clean, then God, he will use you so preciously. The only way to become clean is by four step repentance. But because you don't repent, and then you say, oh, why is it that I can't do well? You know, and you doubt and you say, can I do well? If you're clean, you'll be used most preciously, whether you're old or young, whatever your past. You know, even if, even if you were in the middle of poo, as long as you're clean, you'll be used preciously. This is, this is a word of hope. So all we have to do is repent. Then God, he would, he would treat you most preciously. So we believe that we will be someone precious as long as we repent so let's say I too can do well who is whose promise is this you say oh can someone like me be used preciously isn't only pastor Parker and his wife precious no you only have to be clean so whatever you're made of as long as you're clean the only way to be clean is by the blood of Christ by wisdom so if we repent to be clean then we'll be used in the most precious way so whether you're old or young, whatever your position, whatever you did just a moment ago, if you're clean, then you'll be used in the most precious way. Do you believe this promise? So will we do well or not? We can do well now. Let's say, now we will do well. I too can do well. My children can do well. So we can all do well. Let's say the person next to us, everything, everything will do well. Everything will do well. Everyone will do well. So those people who went to the hometowns and received curses, you will do well. You will do more well. Oh, well, does that mean I should have gone to my hometown and fought? No, it's saying you need to receive curses for the name of Christ. So even if you've fallen and, you know, you've ruined your life, you say, I can't do well, you can do well. So if you're clean and you're used preciously, your past has nothing to do with you. So you think, oh, well now I'm used, now that I'm clean, now you have to continue to be clean. So let's say the person next to us, let's continue to live cleanly. Let's continue to live cleanly. 
Let's continue to live cleanly. So only the blood of Christ makes us clean. So we're here to receive these blessings. So all those all those hurts and becoming dirty after going to your hometown, let's cleanse this. Even now the blood of Christ flows. James chapter 1 verse 5. If we are lacking in wisdom, we have to, if, if we seek it, he will give us unlimitedly. So that blood of Christ is for me. Why? Romans chapter 5 verse 6. It's because of my ancestors' sins. It's because we're polluted by the world because we're not living godly in a godly way. So it's that blood, the blood of Christ. It flows because of my wrongdoings. Romans chapter 5 verse 6. It's when we live in an ungodly way, when we live in the wrong way because we're, because we're one with the world. That's why that blood flows. That blood flows because we have lived wrongly. So how precious is this blood when I live wrongly, when I sin again? Then Christ has to shed his blood again. So let's cleanse with the blood of Christ. Whatever our past, whatever our filthy past, our ancestors' sins, to, to be forgiven, have a new start. So if we're clean to be used in the most precious way as an instrument of righteousness, I too can do well. From now, we will do well. Even if you've fallen, you can do well again. Christ is hope. He's hope that we can do well again. Still, we can do well. Even if we betray and depart, Christ, we can still do well. Let's confess to the Lord. May I do well. May I pray for my family and others, for my country and my people. May we be blessed. Father God, how wrongly have we lived. How much have we denied Christ? How much have we departed? How much have we loved to listen to the Gospels of Curses. Who have I slandered? Am I not washing away the envyings and jealousies and arguings? Is that why? So help us to awaken from this simpleness. Help our country um, to do well. Starting from our saints, may our prayers, may you hear our prayer by us becoming righteous. We believe that our desires will be fulfilled, that our children will do more well that tomorrow will be better. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Amen.